Hi, today we are going to learn another sorting technique that is selection sort. So first we are going to see what is selection sort, how it works with the help of an example followed by algorithm and analysis of selection sort. So let us start with selection sort technique. Selection sort first finds out minimum element from an entire array and try to put that minimum array as the starting index of an array. Here minimum element is moved or shifted to the first index of an array at the end of each pass. In second pass, the next minimum element is found out and it is placed at second index of an array. In third pass, third minimum element is found out and it is put at the third index of an array. And likewise, elements are getting sorted. So here, minimum element of from the list is being found out and it is being swapped with the starting element of an array with the help of swap function. So starting element where element should get sorted is represented by index i. And minimum index is an index of an element which is the minimum from list. So they are getting swap with the help of statement swap of a of i comma a of min. Let us see working of selection sort with the help of an example. An example that we will consider is an array of 5 elements whose indices are starting from 0 to 4. Here we have to find out the minimum element and start or swap it with ith element. So first minimum element must take very first position that is index 0. So we initialize our i at index 0 and we initialize our min index also at the same location as i. So initially we are considering ith element is the minimum element. Now after this we have to compare or we have to initialize another element that is jth element which is next element of an i or I would say it is a next adjacent of i. So j is initialized as i plus 1th index. In this case we will compare minimum element that is in the element at index min with an element at index j. If element at min is greater than element at j, we have to change our minimum index because jth element is actually minimum element. In this case, 50 is compared with 30. Is 50 greater than 30? Condition is true. So we, our, we will change our min index to j index. So wherever the j is initialized, at that location min will switch. And j is incremented with the help of for loop. So instead of initializing j and changing or looping, we have replaced that line with the help of for loop. For j is equal to i plus 1 to n minus 1. That means the last element will j go to. Again, at this particular moment also, we will compare min element with jth element. Min element is 30, jth element is 40. Is 30 greater than 40? No, in this case, min element is pointing to the minimum element and j is the largest. So, no need to change our min index. We will simply increment j. Again, element at min is getting compared with element at j. Is element at min greater than element at j? 30 greater than 20? Condition is true. So, we will change our min to index j. That is, min is initialized to or min is set to j. j is also incremented. Again, compare element at min with element at j. Is element at min greater than element at j? Condition is true in this case because 20 is greater than 10. In this case also, we will change our min to index j. Now, j index have already reached to our last element that is index number n minus 1. So, this is end of pass 1. 
In this pass, what we have to do? We have to ultimately swap element at i with element at min location. So basically, what is going to get swapped? Element 50 is going to get swapped with element at 10. So 10 and 50 are going to get swapped. So here at the end of this pass, 10 is already sorted. Now we will increment our index i. Because this is the next location where the next minimum element should take its place. So initialize i is incremented. Min is also incremented or initialized to same index as of i. J will always take its place as i plus 1. And we will start comparing element at min with element at j. Element at min greater than element at j. Is 30 greater than 40? No, in this case condition is false. If condition is false, min is not going to get changed. Only j will get incremented. Is min element greater than j element? Is 30 greater than 20? Condition is true. So min will change its location to the j location. Again j is incremented. We will compare element at min with element at j. Is 20 greater than 50? In this case, condition is false. If condition is false, min is not going to get changed. It will take its position as it is. Do I need to increment j? No, j has already reached to our last element that is n minus 1 index. So this is the end of our second pass. At the end of second pass, the last statement is swap statement. Swap statement will swap element at i with element at min. So element at i is 30 and element at min is 20. So they must get, get swapped. 20 is swapped with 30. So the final answer or at the end of second pass, we have two elements which are minimum and they are sorted in the beginning of array. Now i is incremented and it is pointing to the third element or second index of an rm. Here minimum is also initialized to same location and j will take i plus 1 position. Again we will compare element at min with element at j. Is 40 greater than 30? Condition is true. In this case minimum element or minimum index must change its position to j location. Again, j is incremented. Compare element at min with element at j. So here, element at min is 30, which is it greater than 50? The condition is false. In this case, we need not to change index of min position. So here, j will also not increment it because it already reached to last element. Here, we will end our third pass at the end of third pass, we have to swap element at i with element at min. So, element at i is 40 and element at min index is 30. They must get swamped at this particular time. After this particular statement, 30 element is now sorted. The next element that must get sorted is at location or index number 3. So, i index is now pointing to 3. Min index will also point to the same location as of i. And j will take its place at i plus 1 location. We will compare element at min with element at j. Is 40 greater than 50? Condition is not true. That means if condition is false, need not to change min index. Here, do I need to change or increment j? No, because j is already pointing to n minus 1 index. This is an end of pass number 4. So, end of each pass, we are swapping element at i with element at min. Element at i is 40 and element at min is also 40. So, it is getting swapped with itself. But yes, swapping will be performed in this particular step. So 40 is swapped with 40, no changes will be effectively seen but it will get swapped. And we have fourth element also sorted. Now do I need to sort element at location or index number 4? 
No, because this is the only element that we have left with and it need not to get compared with any other element. It is already sorted in its place. So, we are not going to initialize min or j in this case when element is already left as one element. So, remember in this case our i started from index number 0 but it only reached up to index number 3 for 5 elements. So, for n elements i should start from 0 and reach up to n minus 2 location. So, here instead of i is equal to 0, we are writing a line as for i 0 to n minus 2, every time min is initialized as ith index and j will start from i plus 1 the location and go up to the last element that is n minus 1 index. And every time we are going to compare element at min that is a of min is it greater than element at j that is a of j. If this condition is true, min is set to as an index of j index. After comparison is done, after all the min and j have been compared, we have to swap element at i with element at min. So that is what selection sort algorithm is. So let us see formal algorithm for selection sort. Algorithm for selection sort will take an array from index number 0 to n minus 1. That means collection of n element. For i is equal to 0 to n minus 2, min is initialized as ith index. For j is equal to i plus 1 to n minus 1, if a of min is greater than a of j, min is set to j. After completion of j loop, we have to swap a of i with a of min. And this way, number of passes will be n minus 2 into n minus 1. And at the end of this, elements of an array will be sorted. Let us quickly perform analysis of selection sort and see what is the complexity of selection sort. Here, size of input is nothing but number of elements in a given array or a list. In our case, we have seen a 5 elements list that is, is equal to n. Here, basic operation that we have performed is a swap operation. So, in the, at the end of each loop, we have performed one swap. So, here complexity is written as outer loop steps into inner loop steps into basic operation. Outer loop is i loop which is represented by summation of i0 to n minus 2. Inner loop is j loop which is represented by inner summation sign as j is equal to i plus 1 to n minus 1. And basic operation is only one, that is summation of one. We all know summation from some lower limit to upper limit of one is equal to upper limit minus lower limit plus one. That is summation of zero to n of one is n minus zero plus one. Similarly, summation of i plus one to n minus one of one is upper limit, that is n minus one minus lower limit, that is i plus one plus 1. Plus 1 minus 1 will get cancelled and we are left with only term n minus 1 minus i. So, inner summation sign of 1 is substituted in our original equation. Outer summation sign will be as it is, that is summation of i 0 to n minus 2. Instead of inner summation 1 sign, we have substituted a term n minus 1 minus i. Now, in this case, we are going to separate out or decompose a term n minus 1 with ith term. So, between these two terms, we are originally having minus sign. That's why decomposed two terms are re substituted with the help of minus sign. So, our final equation will come out as summation of i 0 to n minus 2 of n minus 1 minus summation of i from 0 to n minus let us solve this particular equation. Now to solve this particular equation from our term 1, n minus 1 is a constant term. 
If I am going to substitute different values of i, this term won't get changed. That's why n minus 1 will be taken as a constant out to summation sign. So equation term 1 becomes like n minus 1, summation of 1 from 0 to n minus 2. This particular summation sign is substituted as summation of upper limit minus lower limit plus 1. So it is ultimately becoming n minus 1 into n minus 1. That is our term number 1. Now have a look at term number 2. Second term is summation of i from some lower limit to upper limit, which is substituted as upper limit into upper limit plus 1 divided by 2. That is n into n plus 1 by 2. In our case, it will be n minus 2 into n minus 2 plus 1 divided by 2. So we will substitute this term as its expansion. So ultimately, our complete equation will look like this. We will take n minus 1 outside or common from both terms and try to solve this bracket term which will turn out to be n by 2. So that is n minus 1 into n by 2 which is actually 1 by 2 of n square minus 1. So complexity of a given equation is big O or theta of n square. Selection sort is having time complexity as theta or big O of n square. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Topia signing out.